Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, where we discuss all sorts of things Germanic heathenry related. My name is Jesse. I am your host. Let's get into it. Hello, everyone. Hail and welcome back to another Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Good to have you. Good to have you all back here listening, watching, streaming, whatever it is, however it is. Uh, thank you so much for your support again. Um, got a fun guest lined for, for us uh, today, lined up for us today. Uh, I actually spoke to this gentleman a week ago prior to recording last week's episode, and uh, you know, not really knowing what last week's episode was going to be, but knowing what this uh, episode was going to be about, uh, just having out, you know, having it all line up the way it's lined up, subject matter, you know, last week talking about uh, the charming of the plow thing and, and getting the ground prepared and, and thinking about crops and growing of crops. Uh, today's guest, his name is Philip, um, a local heathen slash pagan in the area. We're going to hear more about Philip's background, but Philip is a guy who I talked to. Um, he messaged me uh, through the page, through the Facebook page. I wanted to talk about agronomy and bringing that back into paganism or having it more of a, of a, of a role or a presence in paganism and what kind of brought him to that realization. Um, so I really think it's going to be a fun show. I'm looking forward to you know rambling back and forth with him and putting some planting some seeds in all of our minds um, and maybe thinking about how we can all uh, incorporate this into our day-to-day practices and, our, and, and maybe even on a larger scale. Um, so let's get into it. I'm going to bring Philip in here to, to talk about all this stuff now. Before I do, be sure to please check the link tree link, uh, uh, what do you call it, link <laughs> in the uh, comments and the description in the show notes, wherever it is that it's, it's going to be at. Um, for all the ways that you can support this podcast, for all the ways you can support Midgard Musings, don't forget to like, follow, share, subscribe, do all those things, and uh, become part of this overall Midgard Musings um, community. So without further ado, let's go ahead and welcome in Philip to the show. Uh, longtime viewer, I guess, from my understanding, or he's been you know watching and listening for a while, but uh, let's go ahead and see what he has to say about agronomy and paganism. All right, folks. Well, I am joined here with uh, Philip, who is a local heathen, I guess you would say, right, Philip? Uh, yeah, pagan. Yep. So, yeah, welcome to the, welcome to the podcast. Um, appreciate you taking some time out to come on here, and um, yeah, just kind of introduce yourself to the listeners and viewers, and tell uh, tell everybody who and what you're about. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, so, my uh, I've been some flavor of neo pagan pretty much my entire adult life. Um, but here in the last, let's say, seven to eight years, been leaning very heavily into uh, Norse paganism and, you know, very, very much consider myself a heathen. Um, and that, that the, and it, it led me to look into a lot of like the Norse ways of life, right? Of course, initially you go through the like, oh, I can mm-hmm. start reading and you're like, oh, farmers, cool, got it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and that I grew up in the country and we always had a, a garden when I was a kid. So there was kind of a, a leaning in that regard. And there's that, um, I guess that idea of kind of self-sufficiency that, that I think goes along with most, most pagan or most mm-hmm. people who have a pagan bent. Um, and that, that those two kind of came together when, um, we'd gotten some land and I was like, okay, you know, my, my wife was pregnant with our first kid and. You know, we decided we were going to start a farm because what could go wrong? <laughs> that's a that's a big endeavor. What's, yeah. So with everybody that's uh, listening and watching here, I, I mentioned uh, offline a bit, um, kind of like as an intro that what we wanted to talk about today with you was because you had reached out to me through the Facebook page and said, hey, you know, this uh, agronomy and, and paganism and the synchronicity, synchronicity, whatever the the how how they can be. Yeah combined or connected and, and whatnot and I thought wow that's you know let's let's talk a bit about it and let's get some because you know that was like kind of I knew what it I know what it is but that was the first mm-hmm. I guess time that I'd heard the a, a name put to it you know um but what we're talking about right is 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 going back to 
what you basically said, right? Farming, working the land, being uh, self-sufficient to a degree of, mm-hmm. of uh, growing your own food and, and living a sort of like farming lifestyle, right? Hey, yeah, to a certain degree, right? I mean, I'm, uh, I work in technology. I'm, you know, very much steeped in the conveniences of modern living. Um, but yeah. that, um, that experiment led to a, 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 I won't say a profound, but a very deep kind of reconnection that really I hadn't realized I was missing until I found it. And it's, uh, the, and I think, um, a lot of people that, um, you know, that, that spend their lives in a, in a more urbanized setting, mm-hmm. that there's a, that's a component that, um, doesn't necessarily gel with the, you know, their day-to-day practice of paganism, whatever flavor it is, um, until you kind of get your hands in it and suddenly it becomes clear, um, how the, the cyclical nature of, well, nature yeah. and, you know, making food out of dirt are so very closely tied together. Yeah, absolutely. And what's really neat is that the uh, the topic of this conversation is coming off the coattails of last week's episode, which I'm not sure if you had seen it or not, but I was talking about this time of year and, and the modern uh ritual of charming of the plow. It, it's and I kind of went back into some of the like, you know, the historical Germanic heathen stuff and that there really wasn't anything like that in in the sense of uh you know, a, a bloat or a sacrifice, but there is absolutely plenty of information that we have that that step that that we get this modern uh, version of of that. Right? There's this focus on making sure that the land is is well taken care of and and actually uh, taking it to a spiritual or even a religious level. You know, gifting to the land, mm-hmm. uh, making sure that the land is is happy and that the spirits that that dwell in the land that that we share space and and all that with are you know, well, well, uh, well tended to, to provide for a good growing season. (laughs) Unless they start messing with your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That was, that was, that was definitely a thing, you know, and I think it's cool that we're having this conversation now, I could say on the coattails Mm -hmm. of that uh, podcast list last week. So you, you had mentioned, right. That you have been in some form or fashion, you know, in, in neo-pagan beliefs for a long time and that you've recently uh found a a a pull towards like the norse or germanic Mm -hmm. model of things what um i I guess what was the what was the the profound or maybe whatever what was the turning point for you to say like that was it like that was where you wanted to go yeah yeah there was um so i always had um i guess a good way to describe it was my experiences with kind of looking through um uh you know, the, the, the various quote unquote schools of neo paganism, right? You know, it, like a lot of people, you start off in Wicca because that's the first book that you stumble across, right? And then, because uh, it's the only one they have in the high school library. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then, um, you know, that, but there was always this sense that there was a, a component missing that there's, you know, portions of my personality were not accurately reflected in my religion. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was really the thing that um, kind of kept me looking. Um, I, I always had a view of deity, um, and this, I still haven't really, you know, nailed this one down, but there was a, a, a view of deity as like this almost, um, not apathetic, but kind of a, you're on your own, right? The, uh-huh. um, and, and that was very contrary to the way most of the people that were around me felt about the, uh, the intervention of deity in your day-to-day life. I was like, ah, mm, no, I don't, I'm, I'm not, I don't expect a, a deity to come help me carry my groceries in the house, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but that, 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 that view of deity, which also came along with this visual of a, um, I suppose it's somewhat telling, but like a, this stark black monolith on a gray, uh, uh, a gray landscape. And um, the, I never could quite find a parallel or something that even lent itself to that visual for a very long time. Um, and it wasn't until um, I had started reading, and coincidentally, about the same time, um, the, the History Channel show, uh, Vikings, started. Mm-hmm. So the, the um, availability of information just, like, exploded. Because mm-hmm. uh, there was, you know, a lot of popular attention, which, of course, then led to a lot of scholarly attention right on its coattails. Um, so that I think really helped. And then it was the, um, 
that kind of corollary between the the view of deity as um, not necessarily something you call on every day, but you honor it because it's 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 part of existence. And um, you know, and uh, when shit goes really sideways, <laughs> you know, you can reach out. Um, yeah. But the that that was I think the thing that kind of pulled me to it the most. Um, and then the that and I've always I've always been a person who likes the cold, um, mm. which drives my wife absolutely crazy because <laughs> uh, she's the Same. exact opposite. Yeah. Like when it's 45 degrees outside, I'm like, all right, I want to go build stuff in the backyard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like um, I'm the same way. I like the cold and, you know, my wife is, I'm, I'm originally from New York. So my wife's originally from Tennessee and mm-hmm. the, she doesn't like the cold weather at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Doesn't shy well. But yeah, it, um, it, it kind of lined up the, um, and, and, and even once I kind of a, made the realization that um kind of my religious home for lack of a better term was in the uh in norse paganism the um from there it was probably another five or six years before they even really nailed down an individual deity that i had any real like personal kind of affluence is not the word i'm looking for but um connection to i guess right Uh, so it was more of a broad like hang out. I like everyone at this party. However, <laughs> I'm still kind of hanging out in the corner by myself a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's a, you know, one of the one of the things that at least I've noticed in, in the time that I've been dabbling in 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 heathenry and paganism, you know, because I came into heathenry pretty much uh directly off of of being raised in a in a Christian worldview, Christian denomination, non-denominational Christian family and and community uh which ironically enough was was also deeply uh rooted in homesteading right we had we raised beef cattle everybody had gardens you know there was a farm that i worked on for over a decade um you know so we we were largely like you know we were talking about earlier being self-sufficient we 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 pretty much could either grow or raise most of what we needed and and didn't rely heavily too much on the outside world. It's not like we never went to the grocery stores, but you know, hey, if you know there was something in the garden and you wanted a fresh salad, you didn't go to the store and grab a bag of lettuce. You went and picked yeah. it out of the garden, you know, that sort of stuff. So I came into heathenry, you know, with those worldviews, with this, I gotta look for some sort of a sacred or divine mm-hmm. being or beings, I guess, you know, that that took the place of this one uh monotheistic yeah. worldview you know and and i think what a lot of uh, pagans forget is that at least in this model of heathenry germanic heathenry is that you know you got to have your own hearth cult every every clan every tribe had their own every family had their own specific hearth cults and that's where everything was was centralized around it was what was the the customs of the family and what was the traditions that lived on through you know the the, the family's doings and then everybody came together at certain key points to connect with the divine their divine figures yeah. their deity or deities but uh one of the thing i noticed i was saying is is ha- is how some pagans just Im- uh, omit that they they don't even come into this with with any understanding or knowledge of of creating your own hearth practices your own hearth cult your own traditions and, yeah I, and I think I sorry go ahead i was thinking with, with a lot of what you're talking about doing you know and, and finding a home as it were in in a, in a spiritual path or in a, in a religious way and, and how it's so closely connected to living off the land i mean that's 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 great i think that that really is, is is almost where a lot of things should start is is maybe not to the same degree if you don't have the space if you don't have the property to yeah. grow and, and all that then maybe not to that same degree but at least find something that you can really like sink your teeth into and establish roots and close to your home close to your yeah immediate heart absolutely right? There's the, um, to your earlier point, I think that's a, um, a lot of people have a difficulty putting down the idea of dogma and mm-hmm. that, 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 um, uh, someone taught me a ritual, so this is the right way to do it. And it, 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 it gives you a sense of, um, realness because that thing was already there. It's like a building you can put your hand on or touch. Yeah. Um, but that's. Um, I think it was very much that absence of dogma that that put me in the position to be able to to kind of find what was for me the right path and make that linkage between 
um, you know, the, the cyclical nature of doing agricultural stuff uh, and that that mechanical linkage to the, um, the, the neo-pagan celebrations and um, the, you mentioned earlier, the, um, uh, the, the bit with the plow, I made a, mm -hmm. uh, a really interesting connection very early on um, because I don't know if you're aware or not, but here in Tennessee, we have fairly nitrogen poor soil. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You've got to uh, fertilize the shit out of some stuff. Yes, I mean, literally do. fertilize the shit. Like it, you've got to yeah, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the, oh, yeah. um, the, and it was funny the, uh, that I think it was probably the very first one that was like, Oh shit, there's like a real connection here. Um, but you know, beyond the, where's the sun in the sky piece was, um, soils that have a very high carbon content are typically really low in nitrogen because the nitrogen binds with the carbon to break it down. Um, and it was actually the, um, very likely the, the sacrificial rituals that put blood into the earth that provided a lot of the nitrogen that the soil uses. Cause like, if you know anything about the, like the three numbers on fertilizer, nitrogen, uh, phosphorus and potassium, right. Mm -hmm. The, the NPK. Yeah. Um, you look at blood meals, 12, zero, zero, it's a hundred percent nitrogen, nitrogen. Going the soil. But that, that was the oh shit that's you know from an agricultural perspective in addition to the the, the ritualized okay you know we're we're starting the um the process of you know uh uh preparing the soil for planting um you know part of that preparing the soil for planting in addition to the ritual of making the sacrifice to deity for to gain favor was to you know kind of throw an extra shoe in the ring by adding some nitrogen to the soil yeah <laughs> And I don't even, you know, like that's really that's a good point because the the science behind it is evident, right? Yeah. But the these people back then didn't. Maybe we're not giving them as much credit. I don't think that they had this that level or that yeah. granular of a level of an understanding of this is why we have to do it. But as it turns out, you know, the blood that that was leaded in 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 shed that that made it into the soil could very well be the the thing that helped literally nourish the ground and, yeah. and give that that gift that was needed it's a good point and yeah. that's the thing that's lacking today i guess you know like we have these synthetic fertilizers um uh, mm -hmm. you know and and uh i've been hearing a lot of people you know talk about how like you look at the price of things nowadays i mean eggs and milk and just produce you know astronomical through the roof yeah uh, and what are we getting out of it, though, when we do get those things? I mean, nu nutri nutritionally lacking products. Frequently, yeah. You know, like there, there's you look at um, the difference between, let's say, uh, chickens that are free range. Mm -hmm. uh, and you look at like the 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 color and the thickness and the, of the yolk. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's even a different. Yeah. It's, it, yeah it, it, meat is the same way i mean yeah uh, it's so like much lumber the mm. and, and i don't know like I've, I've been building a barn and this is the thing that very recently came to my attention over the course of this summer like a lot of lumber that's sold now is fast growing pine mm -hmm. and like even if it's pressure treated as soon as you get it wet it warps yep then it's the the the, the quality that comes from producing at um the economy of scale just you know, it goes down because a lot of the focus is on how much can you produce, not how good is it. They yeah. meet a minimum standard of um, production quality that's dictated to them by a government agency that basically says, don't poison anyone on purpose. Mm -hmm. On purpose. <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to dot all our I's or cross all our T's. We'll right. let that one slide. But yeah, yeah, like, let's not make it too obvious. Right. But that's the, you know, um, they're, they're shooting for, you know, um, minimum level of effort and greatest quantity because they're businesses and yeah. um, I can't fault them for that. They're in it to make money. Right. Um, I think it becomes something different when um, you're tending your own farm. And I'm not going to suggest that, you know, hugging a plant makes it grow any better. But um, when you, when you're dealing at that small of a scale, you tend to pay way more attention to detail. Um, and that, that has a direct effect on how that plant grows. For sure. Now, what is the degree that you're farming? Like you, you said you're, you're building a barn. I mean, do you have, are you livestock as well? I mean, what's your, what's the well, scale? So right we, now? 
that I could give you the, um, the the brief history of how this came about, and you'll kind of get an idea of about where we landed and where we are. So we we moved out here in December of 2019, which was way too late to be trying a farm. Mm. So um, we started in, in 2020, um, and Ooh. our first year, yeah. Oh, what <laughs> a year, like, right? Well, I'm not Let's... going anywhere else, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> but, Might as well build a farm, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> But, um, you know, the first year we just kind of jammed seeds into the soil that we see what happened. And interestingly enough, it was a bumper crop year for squash and cucumbers. Mm-hmm. Everything else was essentially dwarfed, right? I mean, you had, you know, uh, corn cobs the size of my pinky and watermelons the size of my thumbnail. It was real cute if you want to put it on a necklace, not if you want to eat it. All right. Um, but the, um, it's only been about three years now. This is, this is, uh, coming up year three. So the first year we did um, basically just three rows that were about 15 feet long and then a couple of feet between them. And we had set aside a quarter of an acre just for crop production. But um, I had, knowing how little I knew, uh, I knew that if I, I went with my normal overambitious impulse and was like, we're going to grow all the things, mm-hmm. I was going to screw it up yeah. <laughs> and then probably never touch it again. Right. So we started small and then the next year it was five rows um, and we did paid a little more attention to soil chemistry. Um, I engaged the, the help of um, a local resource who actually teaches agronomy um, and he kind of gave me some pointers on, you know, chemical components. And that really started the kind of the chemistry portion of, OK, plants need something that's not in the soil. So I got to do something about that. Um, and then very shortly thereafter, uh, the rabbits discovered our garden uh, yeah so i went with a okay turnabout's fair play if you're going to eat my food then i'm going to eat you mm-hmm. um, so <laughs> we put a trap out caught one um uh my i went to you know tractor supply and got a hutch set it up and then my dog knocked it over and the rabbit got away but um but my son was just devastated because he had been you know he and i had been getting up in the morning making sure it had food and water and all that fun stuff so i was like okay well Let's see about raising rabbits. It's supposedly easy. Uh, and turns out it is for the most part. But yeah, so we, the, the barn that we're building is a part greenhouse, part rabbit barn. Okay. Um, and it's the, um, the, the, the part of the cyclical nature was, you know, when I started looking at natural sources of fertilizer, yeah. um, you know, uh, the, among the best you can get are, um, uh, chicken and rabbit yep and rabbit is referred to as garden gold mm-hmm. and you know i tried my hand at doing a compost pile that did not go well <laughs> at all <laughs> there's a lot of work to that too people don't realize like we yeah. had we had compost heaps and i mean it's not just dumping stuff out there and letting it go i mean you gotta you gotta turn it you gotta you know put what's on the bottom up top you gotta let yep. air to it i mean there's there's again there's there's some science behind it to yeah. make it actually and it's not to. willy-nilly right you can't just no. like oh it's tuesday i'm not doing anything else i'll just go turn it over like you have to pay attention to what goes into it the yep. you know the, the brown stuff versus the green green stuff, stuff so yeah it's like you know what's a better way to turn plant stuff into a fertilizer feed it to a rabbit there so that's what we do we feed the feed the rabbits the scraps from vegetables they turn into poop we put it in the garden and then when uh, when we process rabbits the um nothing gets wasted we use the pelts and we're making um uh stuff from all well, i guess rabbit uh, yeah rabbit fur products my dogs get the heads and the feet and then uh i take the um the lower part of the internal organs and those go get dumped into pipes down behind my fruit trees mm-hmm. so it's you know nitrogen goes back in and that's the uh, kind of where we ended up and where we are now. So the the livestock currently is uh, constrained to just rabbits because they don't go very far, and it's very difficult for them to get to a get through a fence if yeah. you make them small enough. Yeah, and they're about sheep, But that's a I got to get better at running, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> get some get some get some more dogs for that. You know, yeah, the leg, yeah, the leg yeah. work yeah. of it. Exactly. That is that is. 
that is really cool. So what what are the what are the produce crops that you that you've been successful with the most successful with? I know you mentioned um, that one year was like crazy for squash and cucumbers, but yeah, um, we've we've been able to um, cucumbers go really well around here. They really do. I had a year. Uh, I was just going to say before you go on, that like I had too many cucumbers. I'm like, yeah. what the hell am I going to do with all these things? Yep, yeah, we had. Um, I had one to take a picture of. It was a cucumber as big as my forearm. Oh wow! Like, Hold, what am I supposed I had to do with this? I had zucchini did that one year. Yeah, yeah, and, I, and that was the other thing. I was like, "There's got to be a contributing factor to this. That why is it squash growing bonkers this year and not the one following or the one before it? What what what's happening here? That is it a cycle of chemical in the soil or um, you know that that started the agronomy uh, or down the agronomy rabbit hole as it were." Um, but yeah, the we've we've been always good with cucumbers. Um, okra seems to be very resilient. Mm -hmm. um, we're kind of hit and miss with tomatoes. Um, it wasn't until recently that I discovered that they have a um, I need to do a, a a lot more acidic soil for the the tomatoes, and that started me down the path of um, wondering if there was a linkage between um, the the potash from uh, fires into the soil so gotcha. i haven't established one yet but i've only just started that research gotcha so yeah. like just from like you know brush fires or or campfires or yeah just that stuff yeah yeah that makes sense. i would be surprised if someone hadn't made that linkage at one point um wherein you know uh, somebody's sitting around a campfire eating tomatoes and obviously you know seeds fall they do yep. and then they're like look 12 inches away from this that tomato plants not growing very well but that one that landed right next to the fire seems yeah. to be doing great well aren't there uh i, I remember seeing like some uh practices where they'll 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 purposely burn fields like there's i've, I've seen them around here too like you'll you'll see like a, a huge smoke in the area and yeah. you'll come find out that the fire department or whatever's over it uh but controlled burns yeah is definitely a way to enrich the ground and 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 kill off some of the the bad stuff and and, and bring new life to that i mean that's the thing yeah so but yeah we, that's, uh, yeah, go ahead. we we had uh my my, my father-in-law he's always growing tomatoes um every year uh and you know he has just like maybe a couple of like three or four plants that, yeah, that, he, that he you never that need he more than one or two per person Trust nope me. nope nope i mean it's always like he'll he'll grow them and uh he, he eats some uh, my wife doesn't really care for him but i you know i'll i'll eat him and it's like he'll bring all the summer you know it's just like all right ronnie i, I i'm, I'm tomato out right now like what else can i <laughs> between salads and and sandwiches and i mean the neat thing is you can can them right if you yeah. want to go that route you can do it but as i say is uh he had a uh th this past year there was a like a tree in, in in the back wood wood line outside of the yard where he grows them and um you know, all of the plants and stuff had been done producing for the, for the year. And he had, you know, uprooted the the stuff, cut them all down, tossed them in the wood line. And like growing out of the trunk or, or like one of the limbs of the trees, like one of the main mm -hmm. root parts of the tree was a tomato plant growing straight out of the wood. Yeah. I'm like, is that, he's like, look at that. I was like, is that a tomato plant going up there? He's like, yeah, I guess a squirrel may have just, you know, took a dump yeah. or something up there or dropped the seed. It's, you know. And it, it was literally growing out of the tree. Yeah, it's it's bonkers. The um, I've never seen that before. The um, like if you have, like you can take a, a a branch off of most plants, and if you expose it to soil, like it'll start growing a root. Mm -hmm. The like so that 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 chemistry component with the the way the plant sends and receives signals and the chemicals that it consumes, or the the minerals that 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 um, the key parts of the plant to differentiate in a different way um, that, that I find that absolutely fascinating. The fact that, um, you know, you could take a, um, uh, I don't know, a, a bean, right? And if you put it on the right part of the tree, yeah. like you'll have an, an apple bean tree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, uh, I'm, I'm very fascinated with um, fungus, right? And yeah. the mycelium network that exists and, and how it manifests through mushrooms. And, and I mean, you were talking about how like the, the, how, how the 
or you had said something a moment ago that made me think about this um trees and, and plants and all these things they they do they communicate they speak to one yeah. another not in the ways that we do but they have a network they have this this and, and you work in tech and i and i do as well right it's 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 how the internet was based on right all these networks yeah, and things roots. that I mean, yes yeah yeah that's why we call it a trunk right <laughs> and, 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 it, and it fascinates me to, to to no end how um like getting into any sort of nature-based religion so paganism heathenry right these are these are uh folk ways that are deeply rooted no pun intended <laughs> actually the pun is intended uh deeply rooted in nature because again it was it was at times when when if you didn't grow your own food and if you didn't raise your own livestock or whatever i mean if you didn't grow it you didn't eat you yeah. you know it was it was very hard to you know you, you, it wasn't money wasn't a thing it was it was you know that was for like the the rich and the nobility and right. and whatnot they could just purchase whatever they wanted but the people the common folk needed to to survive and and grow what they needed so that and 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 the correlation between how nature communicates you know how trees and and plants the root systems the mycelium network with with fungus and everything how there there's all this stuff going on literally beneath our feet yeah and it's and it's it's mind boggling and and how we can get can, how we should be reconnecting to that and, and and one of the ways i think that you found is through agriculture agronomy understanding all of the the, the scientific chemical parts of all this and 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 implementing it into the the day to day yeah and i think there's a living you, a, a, you you know from a technology perspective you know when you when you read about technologies in a book um you may have a cursory understanding and you may be even be able to perform a job function by rote mm -hmm. but once you've had your hands on it especially you know help desk the i did i did my years <laughs> i think that's where a lot of people start yeah in, in yeah because it's it's like the, the door with the pathway that starts it all with exactly exactly the the, the grinder the, mm -hmm. the weeds out the chaff but <laughs> but um, yeah. the as you as as you start to understand the mechanical interactions of like information systems the the more ephemeral concepts become easier to understand and i think the same is true at least it's starting to feel that way to me. I'm granted still at the very beginning of this journey, um, but the, when you start to understand the, the 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 more mechanical, like the the interactions of stuff and what that means on a practical level, right? A, a, a seed being exposed to a certain mineral and chemical combination will differentiate to a root, and it will start to grow a new plant. But when when you start to understand that, some of the more ephemeral stuff. Um, becomes easier to digest and understand. And I think the same, it becomes true, or at least for me, it's becoming true as, as I start to reconnect um, the, the ritualized practice of recognizing the cycle of nature with the, the, the practical application of agriculture and agronomy, and then the combination of the, um, the, kind of some of the artifacts of those rituals like the you know so the uh blessing of the plow I, it wasn't blessing you called it something else the, the charming uh, well it actually does the same was, thing but yeah it's the same yeah but that 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 action had a, a, a practical effect on the soil mm -hmm. um and if you if you can make that linkage between like the what our current scientific understanding of agronomy is first and and link that to um, the action that became part of a ritual, understanding the necessity of that ritual as it relates to the cycle of nature becomes easier to digest and better and easier to understand. Yeah. It stops being just a thing that you do because it's, you know, a dogmatic way of doing something. Exactly. Or it seems like the right thing at the time. You begin to understand, oh, you know, the... Uh, There's a purpose behind it. Exactly. Right. The, you don't start, you know, sowing seeds when the, 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 the sun immediately begins to, to kick up in the sky right after the, you know, the winter solstice. You wait till the cross quarter day because, you know, everything's still frozen, mm -hmm. <laughs> especially. Yeah. In right. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I mentioned some of that stuff, you know, that we're getting into more specifically now. I, I kind of alluded to the, the purpose of why. Because again, so much of, of uh, 
I think what especially newer uh, newer heathens, newbie pagans, right? That the 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 young ones that are coming into this, they, the baggage that they they bring from previous religious and often dogmatic practices are I've got to do this because so and so said to, or it's written down somewhere, and that's the way they did it. But why did they do it? What was the purpose behind what they did? They had a purpose. It was very purposeful. If they didn't, there were consequences, and that was why. And yes, there was the the the, the, the again the, the how it how it became part of the the ritual practice and, and how it turned into something of a more uh, you know where where you bring the deity into it all. It it it, uh, it again still had that practical and purpose uh, pr- a practical purpose before anything else. Yeah. And if we're not if we're not if we're not figuring that part out first, if we're not understanding why we're doing what we're doing, then we're just going through the motions with exactly. no purpose. And it, and and what are we going to get out of that? I don't think we're going to yeah, get like it, much like, out I, of it. I, yeah, I don't I don't know about you, but I, I find that as a um, a uh, somebody who works in technology and b somebody driving a farm and c you know probably more importantly. Um, you know, the father of two small children. I don't have time for trivialities. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> I yeah. have a lot of stuff going on at any given moment. So the um, the the stuff that has a practical impact, um, even if it is ritualized, um, um, or you know, tethered to a religious intent, especially if it's tethered to a religious intent, um, those are the things that get prioritized as the stuff that I do. The because it's you know, it, it, it's the, the, the multi-purpose action of um, kind of um, reestablishing and maintaining the, the spiritual linkage between what I'm doing on a day-to-day basis. Um, kind of the, the, I hesitate to use the term devotion because that's not quite accurate, but the, the, the recognition of kind of my place as it relates to deity and, you know, the, um, the world around me. Um, and if it yeah. also happens to put some nitrogen in the soil. <laughs> well, yeah, because again, you, you're, you're looking at it uh, from an approach of, you know, growing the garden, growing food for your families, providing being sufficient. You have, again, that, that, that industriousness, the, the self-reliance, all these various things that tend to really, you know, uh, you know, impress a lot of the, the heathen communities now is, you know, how can you be self-reliant? How can you be industrious? How can you be, you know, how can you persevere through hard times? Like all these things that were just inherently a part of an ancient society, almost anywhere. Yeah. It doesn't have to even to be, you know, the Germanic peoples of, of Northern Europe, but just anywhere. I mean, if you go far enough back in any cultures, it's, this was the way of the world at the time. The common people yeah. were farmers and, and, and workers yeah. of the land. You really just have to skip back before the refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, not even that far. Right, exactly. I mean, it's not even that long ago. I mean, yeah. I, just a couple generations back, and you know, it's. I mean, my my wife, she loves this show, Little House on the Prairie. You know. Oh yeah. And I was like, I remember watching that growing up as a kid, and then having a different perspective on it now. Like watching watching it the other day because you know she watches our niece uh, throughout the week, and she's getting her to watch it too. So she's you know really <laughs> absorbed into it all, and just yeah. hearing the. The dialogue, you know, and, and thinking about the time frame of when that was. I mean, we're talking like a couple hundred years ago, maybe at the most. Yeah. And uh not that long ago. No, not really. Not 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 in the grand scheme of things. I mean, that's like, you know, last week in our frame of mind, you know, like it's in terms yeah. of the age of the world and everything else. You know, and just some of the things that they talk about and, and realize that, you know, I can't do this right now because it's winter. Um, or I'm not gonna be able to do, you know, get you that new pair of glasses until the summer. When I'm able yeah. to, you know, sell some of these crops or do whatever. And it's like, wow, man, you know, again, not even all that long ago. And now here we are. It's, you know, what you can uh, what you can get right then, right now. How how can we quickly turn around things? How You know, again, it's not about quality. It's about quantity because, again, it's all about the money. It's a business now. Everything's a business. Yeah. And uh, it's, 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 it's wild just how quickly the world changed in such a relatively short period period of time and i think it's great that there's people like you that are wanting to put these types of plant these types of seeds again pun intended to put stuff like this in people's minds and get to thinking about how can we get back to uh a time where we're because again man like i've i've worked on a farm i know what it means to to work the land 
to grow your own things and the satisfaction that you get from in reaping those those rewards yeah. you know i mean it's it's such a a good feeling to know that the hard work that you put into whatever it is growing the crops raising the, the livestock whatever you know and and you get to enjoy the the reward of that it's it's uh, it's unlike anything else it's so rewarding yeah i could absolutely see where um you know uh, a, a a culture that you know in any culture right that there or a civilization that that whose food was very cyclical right yeah. it would be very easy to see the touch of divinity when you transition from having to drink beer and eating salt pork to getting that first cucumber off the vine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, for all the listeners, if you've never done it, the distinction between a cucumber 15 feet away from a cucumber plant versus the one that you get in the grocery store is miles. Yeah. yeah. Leagues, leagues, le leaps and bounds, right? I mean, most cucumbery taste in his cucumber you will ever have in your entire life. <laughs> <laughs> tomatoes the same way i mean just yep. anything like i uh I, 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 corn fruit oh so much more sugar content in fruit when it you've gotten it very recently off of the the plant when it's ripe mm -hmm. that stuff breaks down very quickly sure yeah you got to yeah, think like time it sits on the shelves plus yeah. the time it took to get there from the field to the truck to the processing plant to the truck that brought it there to you know all that yeah. stuff yeah. again it loses like all the, the nutrients. And, and, and again, it goes back to what I was saying earlier about, you know, the convenience of being able to just run to the store and grab something that you need. Uh, what are we getting out of it? I mean, it, versus having it and, and growing it ourselves, it's, you know, we're not, we're not really doing anything. We're not doing ourselves any good by, yeah. by, by, by just having this, you know, empty nutrient, lacking stuff yeah. and i'm sure there's a you know the uh, a nominal amount of nutrition in your average orange in a grocery store yeah sure i'll never be able to grow oranges in tennessee but um <laughs> the uh um the, to your point right the nutrient content is just by virtue of it having been on the plant going to be higher mm -hmm. that um and you know you you probably still do get a you know a decent amount of you know uh protein, carbohydrates, and vitamins and minerals, but comparatively, the nutrient density of stuff that you've grown in your backyard tended to and have that attention to detail yeah, is going to be more. You know what's going into it, yeah. right? You've, you've literally worked the soil. Your, your, your rabbits produce the fertilizer that gives those plants its nutrients that you're now absorbing, you know? So yeah. what the hell is going into all this mass-produced stuff? chemicals right hormones yeah. a lot of a lot of things that kill even yeah you know, i was like gonna say say nothing of the bees <laughs> yeah exactly right. yeah the neonicotinoid you know pesticides farmers don't have time to plant lavender around their corn you know right um but when you operate at a smaller scale or even a, a moderate scale the, you can have that attention to detail do things like that have mixed crop plots because you're not harvesting it with a combine and have to you know send 900 bushels of corn to one place and you know they're, they're going to get pissed off if there's three okra in there right <laughs> so what would you uh i mean you've been doing this now for a few years you've got you can you, you know you, you got that level of experience and, yeah. and and whatnot uh for anybody that's like you know listening and and watching this and whatnot that are maybe thinking about exploring what to do and how to how to go about it where do, where would you say is a good place to start i'd say start small the um the best thing i could recommend and the easiest way to do it um you know uh, go to home depot or another store or somewhere or go to the grocery store get some tomato uh, tomato pull the seeds out and plant them in a pot mm. and then um you know uh, i hesitate to use the term just kind of see how it goes but the as a, a good first step you'll you will immediately start to see the the connection between the life cycle of that plant and the cycle of the seasons mm -hmm. and then um I, it, I have to admit it does become a little bit addictive you're like oh well i had fresh you know tomatoes can i do strawberries now and mm. then it becomes a thing yeah. and um 
the, the same is true for, you know, um, small herb plants, right? The, you'll taste a, a world of difference between um, basil or rosemary that just came off of a plant versus the stuff you'll get in a jar at the grocery store. Oh, yeah. My, uh, a friend of mine's mom has a, you know, all herbs that she grows in their, in their yard, their little herb gardens mm -hmm. um, out there like in Lewisburg. And so he even grew up, it's like, you know, whenever mom was making the sauce or anything, you know, it was, you know, you need this, that, or the other thing, or, you know, rosemary, thyme, basil, you know, lemongrass, whatever it's run out in the yard and grab it. Don't go to yep. the pantry. It's, 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 we have it right here. Yeah. You know, and uh, everybody, I mean, we got listeners from all over the country, all over the world, you know, so I guess, you know, just know your area, do a little mm -hmm. bit of research just to know what is going to grow good in, in your climates and when but start on a smaller scale, I think, right? Because you're going to know what you can manage if you just start small and just, you know, don't dig up a 15 by 20. <laughs> yeah, that's a terrible here. idea. Ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that March too, because like, you know, I uh, I had a garden in the back of our house here and it was like, you know, uh, maybe 10 feet. No, it was like maybe an eight by 10, mm -hmm. 10 by 10, something like that, you know, relatively small but i mean that's no small potatoes either i mean we had yeah, it's we had a couple of rows of ochre we had a thing of zucchini and tomatoes and, and peppers and cucumbers and and I, that that one year i'm like holy shit this is a lot of work just even this much you know like it's relatively speaking not a lot but man you're talking about just watering the the, the land and and weeding it right because stuff obviously grows up that you don't want so you gotta yeah i'd made the take care of that a couple of years back that the uh um, the idea of, um, was it the, not spontaneous generation, um, but they used to think that rats uh, uh, came out of old fabrics or old rags. Um, I, I don't think that came from rats and barns. I'm pretty sure it came from weeds. Yeah, <laughs> was it? probably. Because it, I swear, no matter what you do, a weed will find a way to germinate in your soil. Mm -hmm. You could be doing it on top of a, you know, the, the 15th story with a little potting, uh, potting tray on the balcony in new york and a weed will find a way to germinate in that soil <laughs> uh life uh uh finds a way, finds a way. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah it does and it's a it but i think too you know looking back on it it's like if if, if anything is to take up our time right if, if we all lead busy lives but if we were to put anything else in our life that takes up additional yeah time what better time could we be spending than to give put 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 that time and effort back into ourselves and into our families and into the well-being of our lives, right? To have a, a more meaningful life, a more purposeful life, and and live a version of ourselves as best as we possibly can. Yeah, definitely. You know? And the um the 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 idea when you mentioned, you know, about family, the one of our original intents for this was. Um, to be able to, you know, not only kind of give our kids some honest to goodness chores, but also for them to understand like where food comes from mm -hmm. and the, the amount of work that goes into producing those calories. Um, the same is true for, you know, even at the smaller scale, right. Having, um, you know, children small and older, um, you know, participate in the, the, the production of that. And the, I, they will see that linkage the first time, you know, they get to partake of something that they produced, Absolutely. I mean, like I said, for me growing up on the farm that I did and and under, and, and being given that degree, because I mean, I grew up on Long Island in New York, and then we moved to like the off of the island close to uh, the lower foothills of the Catskill. So we weren't quite like far upstate in, in the state of New York, but we were, you know, we had a good bit of land. And even when I was on Long Island growing up as a kid, you know, my mom had a small vegetable garden in our backyard. And uh you know, so even at that age, I, I remember, you know, she'd go, you know, go out and get some lettuce for the guard for the salad tonight. Yeah. Or uh, pick peas, you know, she would, she would do a lot of beans and legumes and things like that, too. And just whatever it was, you know, go out and pick it. And I honestly don't think I would have uh, turned out. I was, you know, it's influential and it, and it shapes you into the type of person that you become later on. So having that kind of a lifestyle to whatever degree, even if it's a small plant that you have to take care of a small potted plant, I think really instills some good, like you say, uh, honest to goodness work, you know, chores, um, values, 
you know, and, and puts a perspective on things that you won't learn elsewhere. You know, yeah. you don't just a, download it and stream it. It's you got to work for exactly. it. Exactly. And that, that, um, you know, being able to, to, to peel away some of the expectation around instant gratification, the, um, and, and understand the, the length of time that it takes for nature to do what it's going to do. I think it's beneficial, you know, um, yeah, man, it teaches us patience, right? Yeah. Uh, knowing, like you say, that things just don't come when you immediately want it. You got to wait. You got to allow it to do its thing. And you got to yeah. work. You got to live through that process alongside of yeah. it. And yeah. There, there, there's no cheat code for, uh, for an apple tree. No. <laughs> and that, yeah, no. I mean, not if you're doing it right. Right, you know? right. Even if you're not doing it right, you're, you're waiting three years whether you want to or not. <laughs> strawberries i think are the same way too right because yeah. i remember my parents growing strawberries she my mom thought that she was going to get strawberries after the first year and it's like it thing that you got to grow them like five years at least or something crazy before you even get the the crops return because of the, I don't yeah, know, it's the how, how they grow right want to reproduce itself mm -hmm. and that's all really fun stuff to learn and again it, you know puts those values which again for 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 folks like ourselves who uh have a, a lifestyle or a way of of practicing our spirituality and, and the connection between all that again it, it it fits it just it lines up why because yeah. that's just how it was done for you know for so long and one of the things you know i i see from time to time is you know paganism is is making a comeback or heathenry is making a comeback Our the old gods are returning you know i see that phrase a lot too and i go man you know they, they've always been here yeah, they're gonna say, they've just they, call them they, they, they never left they just were forgotten about and because yeah. of the the you know the industrial age and all these modern things that that put people's minds away from all of that stuff i mean yeah. they've been there they've always been here uh, you know they ain't gone anywhere and so where did we go we you know we we the ones that left i think so yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> We went off the deep end there for a while, man. And some of us still are, I think. There's there's some of us out here that that, that listen and watch my stuff that are, you know, uh, you know, uh, the, the universalist BS is back or the the LARPer is back again just because of what I wear or you know the 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 symbols and things that I have. Well, you know, that's not really heathen, right? The, what does it matter? I mean, I know it's not, but it's you know, just have you have you gotten your hands dirty late, lately you know i mean have you worked yeah. the land have you have you known what it is to go through ordeal to earn your next meal yeah are you are you just sitting behind a keyboard you know bitching that, at me for no reason to have, I mean, yeah there's some benefit to you know um you know historical relevance or oh you sure know, there's a certain novelty to um you know the the idea of like oh well this is the same tool that they used and you can recreate that that thing or whatever um, but you know, conversely, if it makes you feel good and right in what you're doing, as long as it's not hurting somebody else, no one cares. Like I've got the, point. you know, the, um, this guy, this perfect example, the, my sound wave, it was the, the reproduction yeah. that they did, right? When I was a kid, I always wanted a sound wave. I never got one. Um, and no, it's not an original sound wave, but it looks like it and it makes me feel good. Shut up. Right. I mean, let I people like have some fun, you know, yeah. let, let people enjoy their life. What, what short life we have as you know, and, and again, like you say, if you're not hurting anybody, uh, leave well enough alone. And I have to, yeah. I have to remind myself of that a lot of times too, because I mean, it's hard not to, especially with social media and, and being a content creator myself on social media. So, you know, it's hard to not take the bite or take the bait at times uh -huh. when you see things and just want to, run yeah, away with with conversations don't feed the and trolls, things man. don't feed the trolls i gotta keep telling myself <laughs> that you know and sometimes i'm like well maybe i'll actually give them something to think about and they'll learn something or about it. and then i go nope not again nope <laughs> not this yeah. time didn't have didn't work the last time and and you know but i still i fall victim to it i mean even more recently now i guess it's it's trying to uh uh help you know what i mean like when you see when you see people just doing things that are detrimental to not just themselves but to others and people being misfed information mm -hmm. i mean it, it, it's hard reason. not to it is it's it's hard not to just go in there and be like but stop just yeah stop yeah. Yeah, and here's why you should stop incorrect and dangerous right 
right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you know, I, I mean, I'm all for people, you know, like you were saying before, if it's not hurting anybody else, but quite literally the things that people are, are talking about and pushing or as fact or whatever, I mean, this is dangerous stuff. Like you are, you are propagating hatred and, and, and things of, of people. Yeah. And that's like, I don't like that. And I don't want to see people being misinformed and thinking that it has to do with, you know, heathenry or paganism, but you know, you're not going to, you're not going to get through to everybody. And that's just the way it is. So, and then, uh, you know, I, I go through those spells or those cycles sometimes. And then I realize, uh, that's why I like the woods so much. That's why I like walking in the river so right, much because I don't right. get that shit out here, man. Like I can get myself lost <laughs> in the woods or in the trees and in the river. And it's like, ah, yep. The, no, the, this the is this is get, it. The trees don't care where you're from, and that bobcat will eat you no matter what color. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, the river's gonna carry you. I was uh I don't know if you're a uh a Lord of the Rings fan, oh, yeah. uh Tolkien fan, but like I don't know if you, you've seen the uh the Amazon Prime Rings of Power. I started watching it and then um I, I got that I find that I, I I do this thing where I'll start watching the show and then um I'll get essentially distracted i'll have something else that comes up and yeah. then i go Wait, what show was on oh yeah lord of the, or you know the, the rings of power and then of course house of dragons came along and was came like, along with well, it i gotta yeah. finish that one first yeah. yeah there was a uh there was like a there was something in in that series the the rings of power uh because um it, and it made me think and, I, and i'm and i'm blanking on the exact terminology but the the numenorians you know they they were they were an island city mm -hmm. You know the new new Numenor in the in the Tolkien lore, right? They, it was an island city, so I, all the people that were there, it was you know the sea was a very prominent part of their life, and uh, yeah. there was like this this line or something talking about how you know the sea just the sea rules basically it was was the line, and I'm forgetting the exact verbiage behind it, but I know the scene you're talking about. Yeah, where they're like sitting, standing on that boat, and they they all yeah. say it together. But it's like it's a it sounds cool and it's a mantra. But like it, that's the wild, the 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 woods, the river, the mountains. I mean, it's it's the yeah, like you were saying before. The bobcat don't care what color your skin is. I mean, your food, your yeah. your your prey, right? Like, and so it doesn't matter. Nature is unforgiving, and nature is just that unbiased. You know what yeah. I'm saying? If like, there's no. If you want to experience that sometime in a way that's not dangerous, don't eat breakfast, don't know what you're doing, go for a four-hour walk in the forest, and mm -hmm. then um, when you get hungry, try to find something to eat. Yeah. Because nature does not give a shit. Right. <laughs> yep. That's that we have, we as a species have carved out of um, nature of how we live our, we live our lives. It's it's connected because of the nature of the way everything develops, but um, the uh, nature is relentless, and I don't want to say uncaring, but that's probably accurate, right? Life feeds on life, and as far as most other things are concerned, it doesn't care which life it is. If you've got the teeth to eat it, it'll mm -hmm. try. Yeah, it's uh, you know, uh, and 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 if you look at it from uh, a cultural. Uh, way like how the how the northern european tribes and the germanic tribes realized it was you know the the outside anything that was outside of the sanctuary of the inner yard right the the, the village yeah okay the, the tribe the clans and all that like that was safe that was there was lawfulness there was order there was protection what happened outside the 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 the, the utengar the outer layer the outer world right the outer yard there was no law it's outlawry. It's the the law of the jungle, basically, right? Like it, it just whatever happens, happens. And when you put yourself into that situation, you're you're subject to its its rules. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's the you know the the we versus they the hum the the two kind of I, I'm not critical, but I guess points there is that you know the um, the saying about how we carved our our existence out of of nature right we did so because we are such an aggressively social species mm. and um the 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 way that we carved our 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 civilization out of the wilds is um twofold one through that aggressive socialization that we tend to band together and will generally want to help one another because we understand that like you know basic lizard brain that um we fare better when there's more of us mm -hmm. um, 
and then the second component there, and it goes back to, I guess, the kind of the, the core of this conversation, and that is that um, the our understanding of the how we carved our civilization out is our ability to, you know, not have to go chase down food, and we're able to um, devote more of our time to, to intellectual and leisure pursuits because of our ability to produce food. Right. And do it in quantities that mean that we don't have to go rooting through the forest to find a, uh, a plant to eat. We've got it in our backyard. Mm -hmm. And it's that that understanding of the cycles of nature and the ritualization of um, the actions that you have to take to 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 grow that food in the backyard that became part of, you know, the the, the religion. Mm -hmm. I mean, then the linkage to deity, I think, is, you know, um, you know, our search for something greater than ourselves and where you find it is up to the individual. But acknowledging that um, the science behind, um, you know, kind of the foundations of our very civilization is our ability to make food and the um, the way that um, pre-industrial civilizations maintained that knowledge was through ritual sure and um and the, the, i guess the, the the crux of it is right if you can find that linkage between the practical application and the ritual then the ritual becomes much more meaningful and it stops being something esoteric and ephemeral yeah yeah you say like it's almost like putting a face to the name yeah exactly exactly yeah. And so much of that has, you know, uh, I was thinking the other day um, how, you know, all of these gods and goddesses that we read about in the mythology and the lore uh, and how people want to begin put so much focus on that aspect of it. But why? Right. Well, what was, you know, did the common people at the time, you know, worship Odin? Not really. That was uh, at, the for the nobility, for the aristocracy, aristocracy, you know the royalty you know odin was a god of kings right and yeah. whereas freyr and thor were the god of gods of of the common people the working class the, the the people who you know again didn't have the royal courts and and all that stuff the nobility the royalty to to fall back on they they had to appeal to those gods for for good crops and things and they 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 put the work in and then again connected what they were doing and how good it was versus how bad it was to whether or not they made their gods happy or the spirits of the land happy. And, and again, working in that ritual aspect to, to ensure that they could, could survive the winter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the, you know, the, I don't know what the, the deity of cow dung in the soil is, but um, <laughs> yeah. make sure you make that guy happy. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably fair. <laughs> I mean, it's probably fair like, you know the, the the whole like fertility thing uh that you know yes it was you know it, one of the things that we always see in in this, is, is, is imagery was you know very phallic very you know yeah. rock hard kind of thing but you know he's probably taking some rich dumps too to get the <laughs> <laughs> to keep the ground yeah, well yeah. dunged you know what i'm saying <laughs> so yeah but yeah <laughs> and i doubt the norse had a whole lot of septic systems <laughs> nope probably just you know a hole that you had to dig somewhere outside of the village and yeah. you know you just squatted over a stump or something man you know and just man wild times but i'm really glad that we got a chance to talk more about this and i and i hope that you know conversations like this can spark some conversations with other people as well because it doesn't end here uh it, it it's a conversation starter and people that listen and watch you know wherever you wherever you guys are um you know, we hope that if you're able to and, and and find a purpose in it. Again, I want to go back to the finding of a purpose. I mean, if you don't find purpose in it, and in you know, not everybody has to be everything, you know. But this is one of those things where I think if if everybody was more like this, then you would probably uh, find an, a, a richer quality of life, a better quality of life. So if you find purpose behind what Philip and I are talking about here today, then you know, look to implement it into your lifestyles and see how your relationship with the gods blossom and, and, and flourish as well. You know, so many things that I think uh, pagans get, get 
um, they get they get like find they, they find themselves in this rut or at a dead end of you know I feel like I'm disconnected with the gods or I don't feel like I'm as connected with the gods anymore. Well, man, you know the gods are way to heck out here in the in the sacred realms, right? What are you doing to get connected back to the things that are literally right under your feet? And when you do that, watch what happens. Watch how you just inherently become you, you those feelings of closeness return. Yeah, um, because it kind of doesn't you're... work very well until you connect it. Right. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, even if you're not, I, I, I've talked about this a lot too. Even if you're not toiling the land and, and growing things, uh, just getting your body connected to the ground, right? Barefoot, anchored into the ground, walking through the grass, walking through the river, just getting your bare skin back to that. You'll you'll be you'll feel charged. You'll feel you'll feel energized. When I was working excuse me, I was working on the farm. It's hard work. It's laborious. It's, but it's, it's rewarding and it's enriching. And when, at the end of the day, when you're done doing that kind of work, yes, you're tired, but it's, it's, you don't feel like mentally drained. You feel just fulfilled and yeah. ready to to rest and regroup and start that cycle again. Uh, it's, it's a good feeling. Yeah. And it, it can be cathartic. The Yes. You know, going from a um, you know, uh, walking into a patch of land, especially, you know, you know, you just, you know, weeds everywhere, right? Spend three hours on your hands and knees pulling those things up and you turn around and you look at it at the end. Yeah. Your shoulders are sore, but you're like, damn, that looks so much better. So much better. And for guys like us, dude, I don't know about you, but like, especially, you know, when you're looking at a computer screen all day and. Oh yeah. I mean, you, I, I, I like my wife is like, you know, what do you want to go do? I'm like, I just want to get out of the house. I want to go walk. I just want yeah. to breathe fresh air, not look at any sort of technology, yeah. you know, and, and pull ourselves away from it because it's around us all the time. It's everywhere. It's in our pockets, man. It's, it's, it's just all over us. We, we've got to give ourselves that time to just disconnect yeah, and then reconnect to what, what, what's, what's meaningful. It is. And I think that goes, you know, kind of links back to part earlier part of the conversation, right? The, with the, the easy access to, to food, we can mm-hmm. contrib- can can um, commit to much more you know intellectual pursuits, and that people end up with in a lot of jobs that are very cerebrally focused. And you you do you get at the end of that, you're just like I'm tired of thinking about these complex abstract thoughts about you know the this technology and you know that governance framework, these compliance things, that you know uh, yeah. ticketing system, whatever that. They get out and do something physical. Yeah. Remind your brain that your body's there. <laughs> I like that. Remind your brain that your body's there. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. I think that's a great yeah, note. <laughs> yeah, man. Trademark that. <laughs> You'll sell thousands. That'll be here. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I think that's a good note to to wrap yeah. this up on. Um, so if you don't mind, just hang out for a second so I can sure. just you know, bid you farewell. Um, but for everybody else that's uh, tuned in today and, and listened and watched, we hope that you enjoyed this episode of the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, wherever you're listening or watching from, however you're able to engage uh, on the platform. If you can like the video, favorite it, share it around, do all the things that uh, engage the various and, and fickle algorithm gods and keep them pleased, please do so. And uh, until we all talk again, first of all, thank you, Philip. Uh, for, yeah, for absolutely. Taking time out of your busy life to to come and talk, it was really really fun and educational for me. So thank you for for all of that. Yeah, and skull the viewers. Absolutely, yeah, skull to all the viewers, and thank you all viewers, friends, supporters for tuning in to this week's episode of the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Until we talk again, may the gods continue to notice you, and may your ancestors smile upon you. Take care. <laughs>